mold really isn't a problem for us. And I will tell senior leaders, I don't have a mold problem, I have a discipline problem. Did you hear that? That's Major General Eisenhower. Not the Eisenhower that we know, different spelling. But well, there's some name recognition there. Anywho, this clip has been making its rounds the past couple days. Everybody's up in arms because a general said that mold is a discipline problem, a leadership problem, a discipline problem, a dealership problem. So here I am telling you the deep dive that I did about this interview with this general and the other general next to him, Lieutenant General Jones. What originally piqued my interest in this story is that after seeing it everywhere and seeing a decent breakdown on task and purpose, who I follow, and I think you should too if you want to stay up on military issues, well, I noticed that it was only this little blip. Where was the rest of the video? And that was a good question because when I scrolled down to the bottom of the task and purpose article, I saw one comment in particular stating that this was just a small blurb taken out of a 90 minute video and how dare task and purpose take this small bit and make it seem like this general didn't care when the entire 90 minute presentation Q&A was all about soldiers and how to properly take care of them. And it took a little bit of digging because nobody would quote their sources or put a link to the actual video. But I found it. I was able to find in totality the 90 minute interview with Lieutenant General Jones and Major General Eisenhower. It's linked below, but it's on the US Army Material Command Facebook account. Facebook, where you go for news. If it's your uncle telling you that Israel's using nerve gas with Delta Force to fight the Palestinians and Hamas, or your aunt telling you that Joe Biden has a body double and Eddie the real one's dead and Jim Carrey's playing him. What happened to Facebook? But before I go any further and potentially get demoted for talking about a story involving a two and three star general, you bet your bonnet there's a sponsor. Which is why you should use Factor 75 for your meal prep. When you hear meal prep, you think bodybuilder or some sort of fitness competitor, but no, it's for everyday Joes like you and me. You don't have to be Mr. Olympia, but you can still use Factor to cut down the extra LBs that you might be overeating because instead of a dinner plate, you're using portions the size of a garbage can lid. Factor 75 helps you set your goals and meet them along with getting the proper amount of nutrition. And having a couple meals in the fridge is perfect for when life throws some curveballs at you. Be flexible, but eat healthy. And let's be honest with one another, sometimes it's just because I'm lazy. I don't want to clean, I don't want to cook, I just want to sit out and relax. Watch a little bit of YouTubes and eat my delicious Factor 75 meal without having to spend 30 minutes in the kitchen. Just open up the box, throw it in the microwave for two minutes, send your chow down on some delicious chicken and artichoke with a little side tray of veggies. And their shakes are great for a little morning pick-me-up. Skip breakfast, but still get the nutrition. And Factor is giving you 50% off of your first order just to try it out. Just use code, and I'm not making this up, Pogue Angry Oct 50 to get 50% off of your order. Pogue. How did they know? Just click the link below, put in the code for 50% off. Pogue! Okay. Let's kick this off, Lieutenant General Jones. Tell me what this whole thing is about. But for IMCOM in particular, uh, it is housing, uh, it is childcare, it is spouse employment, and then it's improving the PCS process. Um, but that one, and it ties to that first one you saw in the town hall, the senior leaders of healthcare. But there's another aspect here specific to Fort Bliss I want to address, and that's um, uninformed narratives. All right, I like it. Let's get informed. Let's soak up the knowledge so we can make a good plan of attack. So far, nothing being said is inflammatory. One of the things that uh, from a long time to now, and I think Secretary Wormuth kind of brought this out in opening ceremonies, when she said there was about $6.5 billion worth of deferred maintenance on our installations. And, and from a from a young child to now, I've always heard stories that are related to the Army treats its soldiers' families less than that of the other services, particularly the Air Force. What you said was probably accurate 20 years ago. It's still last choice. But the commitment from the Secretary uh, for investment year after year of over a billion dollars, approximately $1.2 billion. That $1.2 billion annually is probably being spent really shitty. Let's break that down. Let's say that it costs a million dollars to fix each barracks, to bring it up to a standard. One million. You could fix 1,200 massive barracks buildings. Do it. 
I'm giving you a million bucks for barracks housing. For what house? One barracks. Fix 1,200 of them in the next year. Do it. Do it. Those are your numbers. You said those numbers. I'm giving you a million dollars per home. Do it. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, how we avoid being on the Army Times mold <laughs> as and so forth. All right, here's the question. Here's the question. How do we stay out of the Army Times with the mold problem? I think the Army Times is out there too, Karen, by the way, because we're, we're meeting with them here shortly afterwards. But Karen, th thank you. And I'll tell you, and it, it, but it starts with what I would say is first principles. And, and I will provide a little more detail, but if you start with the Army is people and the Army is command-centric. If you start with those two things, everything else kind of flows naturally from there. But I remember being shown a house in the summer of 2021. Uh, before privatization. And I walked in there with, I now have three sons, we had two sons at the time. I turned around and walked out. I said, I cannot ask my family to live in this house. 2021, you're, you're two years ago? Two years ago, a general, you're, you were definitely a general two years ago, three stars, it takes a while. Two years ago, you walked to an army barracks and you said, this is so bad, I can't stay here. A general, you, a general, walked into a barracks and were and and looked at it for you the barracks was for you and you said this is unsat if that doesn't tell you how widespread this problem is i don't know what is for a general to walk into his new living quarters and be like holy shit this is trash you don't think that that would that shit flows downhill and that's some E1 walking through the fucking barracks he's about to go to is like, oh my god, black mold, drippy pipes, all this shit. If a general's house isn't fucking up to standard. And, you know, we, we scraped together, we rented a place nearby, and, you know, but I was not going to live in that house. Scraping by? Are you sure you meant two years ago? Are you sure you meant 2021, not 2001? Because holy shit, a general is not scraping by. And by the way, if you were a one or two star back then, which I'm sure you were, I'm almost certain that you would really get the creme de la creme of living spaces if you said, hey, I need a temporary living space on base housing person that's probably like a, a major or a lieutenant colonel. But hi, General Jones here. Give me a fucking house and that guy wouldn't shit you some beautiful pad to temporarily live in while your shit barracks house is getting redone and remade. I'm thinking that you're wrong with the year, but if you're not, holy shit, this issue is out of hand. Two years later, I moved to another installation, again, before privatization, and the uh, garrison gave me the keys and said, here's your house, and you really can't make this up. They said, this house is condemned. We're going to, de to demolish this house next year. Don't put any work orders in uh, because we're not going to respond unless it's an emergency. Now, I don't doubt, I don't doubt that it happened because it happened to me in 2007 when I returned from overseas and I was in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Liberty, whatever. My unit literally tore down the caution and danger tape from World War II barracks that had asbestos and were condemned and had black mold all in the showers. And they're like, sorry, you're here for like three weeks, man, while you do your demobilization. Fucking deal with it. Luckily, somebody's stepdad or father-in-law was a one star and he was just like, get these guys the fuck out of here in three days. You're, you're not, they come home to fucking moldy shit, you fucking high. So obviously this is a problem, right? Fortunately, um, privatization put that in the rearview mirror. Now, now, you said the privatization of like these housing units, right? You're using private companies, you know, contractors, you know, to come in and fix them up. Now that's that's pretty much stopped all this shit, you know, for the past couple years, right? Oh, interesting you say that because in January 6th, I posted a video right there. Check that out. Balfour Beatty, one of those six major privatized companies that's supposed to take care of housing, stole $20 million from the United States government in just bonuses, in just bonuses, because they didn't do their job. They didn't fix shit when they were supposed to. They fudged the numbers on whether or not they fixed something. They fudged the numbers on how fast they fixed it, if they fixed it at all. That's just for, that's just for them to get the bonuses. We don't even know how many times that they've screwed over housing people. Oh wait, 
We do because there is an investigation and yet they're still contracting for the US military. So you ran into problems in 2021. I think you fucked up those years. 2023, I think you fucked that year up too. And now you say that the privatization of this, it fixed everything. It's a lot of, it hasn't fixed everything. But it's really gotten taken care of. And then, but there's a congressional investigation on Bell for Beatty for fucking it up. Watch that video and tell me that the privatization of this, is it's really solved a lot of issues. A lot of them. Once again, Bell for Beatty, everybody made complaints. They called it in, they never fixed their shit and it took years for it to be found out. Watch the video, I'm telling you watch the video, I go through it in depth of why they can't be trusted and they're still an issue. That's where, again, leaders come in to solve problems, but I think that's how we keep out of the Army times, if, if you want to put it that way. That E7's job is to put them in a POV, drive down to the housing office, and stay there until it's resolved. And they're the power of a first sergeant calling and saying, this is First Sergeant Eisenhower for Alpha 167. I want to talk about the work order for Corporal Jones's fence. Well, there you go. I agree with that. Hey, hey, sir, first class. Hey, First Heart, your troops barracks fucking suck, and he's been doing everything to try and fix them. It's your responsibility. I 100% agree with that. I don't know if a First Sergeant actually calling these people causes a change, but hey, Top, use that diamond. Whip your dick out. That's the point, right? You're the guy in charge. You're the top dog. I'd love to see a First Sergeant on that phone call. Hey there, contractor. What? What's going on with doggone soldier's fence, huh? There's a doggone hole in that thing, and he put in a trip ticket. Like, doggone three days ago. What the frig is he supposed to be doing with the hole in his fence? I got an idea, how about I come down there and I stop a mud hole in your ass? Or, I don't know, maybe you do your gosh dang job. Who? Because just the lack of humidity, we're not under the same conditions. We have had some mold problems, but that's from leaky pipes we didn't discover until it was too late, and there's a quick way to fix it, it's acute. Mold really isn't a problem for us. And I will tell senior leaders, I don't have a mold problem, I have a discipline problem. Now there's the line. There's the clip. There it is, everybody. We've seen it. We've heard it. It's a discipline problem. It's a leadership problem. Sometimes. No, I get it. Yeah, sure, some Joes are gross and they're dirty and they don't know how to clean up after themselves. But when somebody asks you, General, how do we stay out of the army times with this mold issue? None of the photos we see are a kid's toilet filled with shit because he just doesn't know how to flush. It's not a bathroom where the shower stall is dirty because he didn't scrub things down hard enough. It's drywall with black mold coming through it. It's heating ducts and AC vents that have black mold strewn all about them. And sometimes closets, which I think we both know are supposed to be dry, have black mold covering soldiers' uniforms, dress uniforms, God, get those replaced. I personally think everybody got in an uproar because the bathroom cleaning isn't the issue. It's not the environment that is dry and tepid in Fort Bliss, Texas, compared to other sweaty balls, muggy forts in the United States. It's barracks issues that go unheard, you know? Kind of like the Lieutenant General going and living in an abandoned property that's condemned. Or walking out of one because it was so shitty two years ago. So he says, I really think he fucked up those dates. But for some people, it's as real as it happening last week. How are we blaming the troops or the leadership for plumbing that's leaking behind the walls that causes black mold to grow on this side? Or the ducts? Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to have a troop go up in there with a rag and then start hand jamming his arm in through the vents? Like that's not on us, that's, that, that, that's not 10 level tasks. 10 level tasks mean that you do that, it's operator issues. It's like you, I, I'm operating the thing, it's a basic level task, I can fix it. Kick an open drywall and fixing a leaky pipe ain't it? That ain't on the Joes. Going through the air ducts, that ain't on the Joes. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. And for any post commander to go, wow, that's their brand new building, it's their fault. Here is a great example. I was in Fort McCoy all of June for a leadership school. Yay me. Brand new barracks, just built. We're like the second or third class in it. Would you be amazed if I told you there were zero vents in the bathroom or shower areas and that none of the windows opened up? I'll say that again. 
The bathrooms with shower stalls in it and shitters where I fucking shit my brains out and it reeks like shit. Notice the shit theme I'm going with. Don't have any vents. How do you get the moist air out of a room if there's no vents and the windows don't open up? Are we all suicidal threats that we can't crack a window six inches on the third floor of a building? We're all dumb enough, we're just gonna fall out drunk. Say, it's out, man. Every window in the barracks, you, you couldn't open. There was no handle, there was no latch. It was just a pane of glass, you couldn't move. And no vents in the bathroom. No vents! I'm losing my shit over the no vents. That's how these issues happen. And if a general can't change shit when he gets put into a condemned building or a moldy ass barracks, why, how could you start blaming leadership and the troops? I think that's why people may be upset. See something in the house that isn't quite right? They need to say uh -huh. something. They need to act, reach out and do the maintenance because that way it could be addressed before it becomes a huge issue. I agree. If you see something, say something. But if you've listened to anything I said in the past two minutes, how are we gonna be heard when a general can't get into a good living quarters? Or Fort Bliss, if you if you go on the Facebook, they updated the defect schedule today, or for this month, wasn't done the previous six months, and the Fort Bliss Army.mil website doesn't have a link to dining facilities or warrior restaurants. So I understand that we have an improved app that'll have the, the dining facility information, but how do we get a requirement that that be kept updated regularly so that soldiers can be disseminated that information? And also, shout out to Army Times that's in the room covering this. Yes, Eisenhower taking notes again. He's listening. He's like, okay, oh, some shit's going wrong. All right, I'll fix that shit. Were you in the room when we briefed General George last Monday or last Thursday on the app? Because um, we highlight him being a little bit um, facetious there. Were you in the room is the biggest Fuck you. Shut the fuck up, you. That's a pretty good fuck you. That is a very good camouflage. Shut the fuck up. Were you in the room when we briefed General George last Monday? That's a very good camouflage. Shut the fuck up. Were you in the room? Were you in the room when we briefed? Oh, oh, were you in the room yesterday when I decided not to answer your question and try to make you look stupid? Were you in the room? When Shut the fuck up. The software factory team used that as an example to highlight soldier feedback. So if soldiers go and the hours that are on the app either are, don't match reality or don't match as posted on the door, right then and there, the soldier can put feedback in the app that goes back to make sure it is, it is fixed. So it's feedback from any one of the users that are out there. And that really um, got the chief's attention to make sure that we are, again, responsive. Um, and it gets back to that single source of reliable, accurate information delivered through multiple means. Was his answer it's the soldier's fault for not complaining. I need to watch that one more time. Um, and it gets back to that single source of reliable, accurate information delivered through multiple means. Yeah, 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 it definitely, it definitely seems like he's blaming the soldiers for the time not being posted because they didn't complain on time. Wow, that's, that's the most officer-ish thing I've ever, I think I've ever seen. It's not my fault that the shit I'm in charge of is wrong, it's the soldier's fault for not complaining about it enough for me to change it. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Oof. Sir, I, I understand the, the idea of having that mm -hmm. feedback if it, if it is yeah. wrong, mm -hmm. but without it being a requirement, mm -hmm. there's no force that requires that. Mm -hmm. I called the CG hotline for Fort Cav to tell them that they hadn't mm -hmm. updated their defect schedule in yeah. six months. Um, the month after it was in the news, they still didn't update it for, for that month. Boom! Boom! I called! I complained! Still no fixes! Oh, whose fault is that, man? Are you in the room? Whose fault is that? Were you here a couple of days ago? Were you in the room? No, I wasn't! Boom! I was too busy making complaints that you were ignoring! Damn! Damn, son! Were you in the room? Woo! Oh, fuck! That guy's screwed just like I am! Never get promoted! You're fucked! You idiot! I'd, I'd be careful yeah. saying that commanders can't be bothered. That three star can't be bothered! Now with that dude's fucking questions. Were you in the room? Mm -mm. Were you here yesterday when you decided to throw in my face how things weren't working after I blamed the troops for not complaining? Sure seems like he couldn't be bothered. 
I came into this video ready to disagree and be like, General Eisenhower, what are you doing? And I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards, he's kind of right, a little wrong with, you know, the discipline issue thing. I disagree with that a little bit, but a lot of the other stuff, he's doing a great job. I actually really like him. I didn't think I would flip uh, Lieutenant General Jones here. Are you in the room? I don't think that you and a lot of the troops down below are on the same page, General. Oh, I'm losing my voice. All right, weirdos, that's all I got. Listen, like, share, subscribe. YouTube fucking hates me right now. You're not seeing any of this shit unless you're subscribed. I'm telling you right now, I looked at my analytics. It's, uh, if you don't, I don't know what I did to piss them off, but it worked. What do you think of the background? I moved into a different room trying to figure things out. Let me know if I need to change it. All right, see you next time, weirdos. Oh, I got a new shirt. Committing war crimes. I think it's funny. It's a play on words. Angry-cops.com. Are you in the room?